ZBrush's unique approach to material development has enabled artists to create astonishing surface qualities for their models using an intuitive and creative interface. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the ways that materials can be used to add realism and style to your ZBrush models. ZBrush allows you to paint materials directly onto your mesh. You can choose one of the material presets or your own custom material and use a brush to apply the material precisely where you want it on the surface. The material is applied directly to each polygon of the mesh. In preview mode, you can see a hard edge at the border where the two materials meet. However, when rendering with BPR, you can blend the materials at the border, and you have precise control over the smoothness of the material blending by increasing the material blend radius slider found in the render palette. This creates a nice, smooth blending across the border of two materials. In this case, I've actually painted five different materials on the surface of the mesh. When rendered with BPR, the border between each material is nice and smooth. Another way you can control the surface quality of your models is by using the shader mixer. In this example, I have applied a material that has two shaders to the surface of my character. Shader 1 has a very diffuse quality, and Shader 2 has a very glossy, reflective quality. When I turn on both shaders, you can see that Shader 2 is simply combined with Shader 1. Now I'm turning off Shader 2, and I'm painting a bright red color on the lips of the character using standard poly painting techniques. Now I'm turning Shader 2 back on, and in the Shader Mixer, I can control how Shader 2 is mixed with Shader 1 using new controls which have been added to the Shader Mixer interface. So for example, if I adjust the Bi Saturation slider in the Shader Mixer, I can control how much of the shader appears on the model based on the saturation of the colors painted on the surface. The results update in real time so you can see immediately the character appears now with shiny lip gloss. So all I'm painting on the model is actually color, I'm not painting the material. The color is controlling how the materials are blended. So as I paint other saturated colors near the eyes, you can see how that shininess is starting to come through. You can also see how smoothly the shaders are blended together. And this is truly amazing because I can create a very nice smooth blend between the shaders that updates in real time. You can see exactly how the shaders are mixed together and use the smooth brush to actually smooth the borders between the shaders. Now if I want even more precise control, I can choose a red color that matches the lip color and then adjust the by hue, by saturation, and the exponent sliders so that only the red color of the lips are shiny. The sliders allow you to make adjustments and see the results instantly so that you can continually fine tune the material quality of the model while you work. And since the red color is controlling how shader 2 is mixed with shader 1, any place in the model that I start to paint that red color is going to bring out shader 2. And of course I can continue to change the look of shader 2 while I work. So if I decide that I want to make the lips a little bit more diffuse or a little bit shiny or change the specular quality, I can simply open the modifiers for shader 2 and adjust a few sliders. Unlike conventional 3D applications, I don't need to worry about tweaking specular or diffuse texture maps, and in ZBrush the results are visible on the model in real time. And of course you can see the results in preview mode and also when I do a BPR render. The shader mixer also allows you to control the way shaders are mixed together using lighting effects such as shadows and ambient occlusion. In this example, I'm using ambient occlusion to determine how the shaders are blended together. So when I do a BPR render, you can see the result. It's a very interesting effect. And of course, you're not limited to just blending two shaders together. You can use a tri or quad shader to develop a very sophisticated look by blending multiple shaders together. So in this example, I've used shader one to create sort of a diffuse effect. I'm making a broad specular highlight by adjusting the uh, specular curve and then adding a slight color to the diffuse quality. So I'm increasing the colorized diffuse slider in order to add just a little bit of color. So I'll switch to the second shader and this one again will be more of my specular highlight. So I'm lowering the ambient and the diffuse and adjusting the specular strength as well as the specular curve. Now for the third shader, I'm actually going to copy the matte cap skin shader and paste it into the third slot. So now I actually have a matte cap 
for my third shader. And this one I will use to create sort of a subtle subsurface scattering effect. So now I'm going to go back to the specular shader and decide how it's going to be applied to the model. I can change the blending mode to screen, so it's just layered on top. I'll take a look at how it looks in the BPR render. And now I can adjust the by shadow slider so that the specular highlight doesn't appear in the shadowed areas of the surface. And this is apparent when I do a BPR render. It's a subtle effect, but when developing shaders, subtlety is everything. So you can see the result right there. So at this point, I'll switch to the third shader and take a look at how we can apply this to the model. In this case, I'm going to set the blending mode to overlay. So I'm going to set the slider of the by shadow to the positive direction so that this effect is stronger in the shadowed areas. When I do a BPR render, you can see the result. I can fine tune how the effect is applied to the shadowed areas by uh, adjusting the shadow exponent slider. And you can see with a little bit of tweaking, I can get something that has a little bit more contrast, so it's a little bit more interesting looking. And here's the final look of the shader. Of course, I can continue to tweak and really develop something quite spectacular.